Welcome to TSR tonight. I'm your host, Brian Moss, flying solo again. Uh, in a few minutes, we will have uh, a buddy, Mike James, from the uh, Mid Report. Uh, he covers uh, everything Navy for rivals. He'll join us to talk about the uh, Navy Memphis game. And uh, first, we'll go over, you know, what happened uh, last week. Memphis uh, wing, wins 37-3. to three. Initial thoughts when I, you know, first uh, look at that game, you know, the, the first quarter, I, I did not like the, the first quarter whatsoever. Memphis only got, you know, three points out of it. Um, it, it was really, really lackluster effort offensively. Uh, you know, first quarter, they did have 112 yards, uh, you know, in, in that first quarter. But when you take a look at the drives, uh, you know, the uh, first two drives Memphis had three and out and then three and out, uh, you know, and then the uh, the last drive of the first uh, quarter, you got, uh, you know, went 13, I mean, 13 plays, 53 yards in the field goal. So, uh, I mean, overall, first quarter, I just, man, it just, you know, there, you saw some things on the offensive line that uh, still kind of worrisome. Uh, but that second quarter, Memphis, you know, figured figured stuff out in that second quarter. Memphis just, you know, they, they blew it open. That you you could really see them kill the will of the the Red Wolves that quarter. Uh, I mean, when you take a look at it, uh, you know, Memphis had you know a touchdown, uh, two possessions. It was a touchdown and a touchdown. Uh, it was just you know it was it was, it was great to see. Uh, you know, the second quarter is what you know we were expecting out of this Memphis team. Uh, you know, they were throwing it. They were uh, running it. Uh, the defense had uh, from Der uh, DJ Bell, 36-yard interception return for a touchdown that quarter. So, I mean, just a fantastic quarter uh, of, you know, that, that second quarter that Memphis played. Um, you know, when you take a look overall the game, you know, the set, the second half was, uh, again, a little, little lackluster. Uh, you know, they did uh, – score 13 points, but uh, in the end, Seth Hennigan, he was 21 of 29 for 239 yards, two touchdowns. Running, you know, it's a little bit of an issue. Um, you know, you only had Blake Watson had, had 20 carries, 51 yards. He only averaged 2.6 yards per carry. So definitely difference from the first game to the second game. And when you're going into uh, Navy, you know, to me, Navy's defense is going to be a lot better than Arkansas State's defense. Um, you know, we'll, we'll talk to Mike James about that uh, coming up in a minute. Um, but, uh, again, there, there's a lot that Memphis can work on. Um, you know, receiving-wise, you know, you, you had three uh, – you know, three players that had uh, four catches, uh, Lanfear. I don't want to say a breakout game, but a, a game where, you know, you saw glimpses of what he can do. He had four catches. Uh, he was targeted five times. He had four catches for 27 yards. Uh, you know, Blake Watson had uh, four catches. Uh, Kobe Drake, you know, four catches. Rock Taylor, who had a great first game, uh, he was targeted five times. You know, he got uh, three catches. So, you know, it was a little – a little surprised uh, with some of the play calling in the game. Uh, you know, I think that first quarter, the first and third quarter, I was just like, mm, there's there's definitely some plays where I'm like, that's the sequence of plays. I'm like, ah, you know, if 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 Arkansas State's giving you middle, take the middle. I mean, take what the defense is is, is giving you. Um, but it just seems like the, I think the the effort was there, just the execution um, at times was a little suspect. And to me, you know, I think the play calling uh, at times, again, just a little suspect, you know, the, the games are getting progressively uh, harder and, you know, these, these little mistakes that keep, you know, popping up, you don't want them to persist. Um, so, you know, we'll have, uh, we'll have to see what, uh, what comes out with Navy. Because Arkansas state's defense was ranked 128th in the country. Navy is 66. So, you know, it, the, the defenses are, are going to get uh, tougher. And then the following week, uh, Missouri, you know, uh, I'd have to look at to see where they're currently 
Yeah, Missouri currently ranked 16th uh, as far as uh, top-ranked defenses. So you really want to get this offense fixed before you go any further. Uh, you know, uh, just that, that offensive line, th- there's glimpses. Uh, you know, I, I think, you know, when you take a look at the – whether you like it or hate it, the pro football focus grades – um, you know, the, the highest uh, graded offensive lineman is uh, Jonah Gamble. He has a 73.8. Oh, actually, I'm sorry, Jacob Likes. He has 75.1. Then you have uh, Jonah Gamble at 73.8. Um, 73.6 for Xavier Hill. Davion Carter, 73.1. And, you know, Kalen Pounders, he's uh, at 51.8. He's new. You know, he's, he's uh, you know, first-year starter. He'll get there, but it is something to watch going forward, this offensive line. Um, you know, Coach Silverfield even mentioned, you know, the offensive line at the you know, press conference that it's – it's. I don't think it's it's a concern as much as it was last season. You do see the improvement over, the, uh, over last year. You just want to continue to see that improvement because, you know, my prediction – of Memphis winning, you know, 11 games, winning the conference. I mean, it, it's, and I said it preseason, it all depends on that uh, offensive line. Um, but we'll have uh, Mike James uh, coming up here in a minute. He's with the mid report. Uh, so we will take a, a break real quick. And when we come back, we'll, we'll talk to Mike James from the mid report. Looking to get away from it all? Hey, it's John here with Tropical Getaways Travel. And when I'm not following the Tigers, I help families and groups have their next amazing vacation. Maybe you're looking for a cruise, or maybe it's an all-inclusive resort that you've been dreaming of. Either way, I can help you plan a vacation that fits your budget and your lifestyle. When you're ready to start planning that vacation, give me a call at 901-667-8747. That's 901-667-8747. Or you can visit my website at tropicalgetaways.net. Let's start planning your next amazing vacation. All right, Memphis takes on Navy this Thursday night. Uh, So it's a good time to bring our good buddy Mike James over from their mid-report. Mike, how are you doing today? I'm doing all right, Brian. How are you doing? Uh, not too bad. Uh, you know, it's, it's a short week for both teams. Um, so what uh, – I forgot to look at the history of how many times uh, Navy has these short weeks. Uh, do, is it like Memphis? They usually have one or two a year? Um, yeah, a lot of times they've been, been able to play on, on Thursday nights, uh, a lot of times – a couple times against Memphis. Um, it's just – you know. You know, Navy Navy is kind of popular, so so it's a uh, it's a popular uh, uh, game to move to to midweek. Yeah, and how do you evaluate um, how the new coach is doing the first two games of the year? Oh, it's it's so hard to say, uh, especially considering that the the two completely opposite ends of the spectrum when it comes mm-hmm. to the opposition. Um, Notre Dame is always going to be a tough a tough game for Navy, and even more so in the first week of the year. Um, and then on the flip side, you, you play Wagner and, you know, Wagner is an NEC team, you know, FCS that and not a, it hasn't been a, a good one in recent years. Um, so you really don't know what you, you have e- either way. So there are a lot of unknowns for Navy. And, and in some ways, this is just as much as op- an opener as as the other two games were. Yeah, and when you look at the uh, the Navy offense, uh, uh, I know a lot of fans will take a look at the stats and say, well, they're down, I think, 60 or so yards, uh, you know, per game on offense. But, you know, you had that Navy, uh, I mean, that Notre Dame game at, at the first. So, to me, that kind of skews the stats a little bit. But when you look at the the offense, do you see an improvement from last year or is it still, you know, remain to be seen? Uh definitely still remains to be seen you know what's what's funny is i'm not sure we've seen whatever the base offense is yet from navy um they didn't run it against wagner last week i'm 90 percent sure that what we saw against wagner was really just not wanting to tip their hands for for the mm-hmm. game this week especially considering that it is a short week they had a bye week before Wagner, so they probably wanted to get some a lot of Memphis work in over the last couple weeks. So I think they figured they could kind of 
just roll out the the old offense against Wagner and probably end up winning. It didn't. It wasn't pretty by any means, but it got the job done. And then against Notre Dame, we saw a couple of new things, a couple of new formations, a couple of new play designs, but it's hard to tell if that's representative of what the base offense is or if that's something special they put in for a game like Notre Dame. Um, so there are a lot of questions. Uh, I really don't know what to expect coming coming up this week, I, but I suspect it'll look closer to the offensive design of the Notre Dame game than it did last week at uh, against Wagner. And talk a little bit about uh, Ty Lavatai. What have you seen from him this year that, you know, it, or is there a difference, uh, you know, from last year? Is he continuing on to be, you know, a, a just one of those another great Navy quarterbacks? You know, he hurt his ACL last year and, and left at, at the end of the year. And um, as he's rehabbed, the coaches were saying bef- d- during fall camp that, that Ty was actually moving better than he was before the injury. And I was a little skeptical of that because it just defies all logic. Logic, But sure enough, I think he is actually moving a little bit better. Um, now, he's still not necessarily the most natural runner, which you're going to want to, if you're going to truly be be effective in this offense. But he he re-won the starting job even after missing the spring just because he was grasping the new offense so well. And he started 20 games for Navy in his career. He clearly is the most poised of, of the bunch. Um, and his passing has, has improved. Um, he's had one or two passes each game where you kind of wonder – you know, you know, why did you underthrow that? You know, he misses a couple of couple of easy ones. But last week at Wag- Wagner, boy, he had some throws that were really on the money, um, hitting guys in stride, hitting guys uh, over the middle, um, which is a dimension that that supposedly we're going to see a little bit more passing this year. It's a dimension you're going to want to see. Um, so, so it's still some unknowns, even even with Ty. But I do think he's. He's improved some uh, over the last couple of seasons. And besides uh, Ty, who who else should Memphis fans uh, watch out for? You know, on the offensive side. You know, that's a, a also a good question because we really <laughs> don't know who the playmakers are, are going to be in this offense quite yet. But there are a couple that I think are are, are pretty are pretty safe bets. Um, top of the list is Daba Fofana, who's the the starting fullback. Um, he was kind of buried on the depth chart at the beginning of last season, but worked his way up to the top just because he picked up the offense so quickly. Um, he's done the same. He's running well. He runs hard inside. He has a little bit more. Um, he's not the, the typical option bowling ball fullback that, that you're used to seeing. You know, he's more of a tailback, um, tailback type. Um, and in fact, even in the new offense, they, they've actually changed the terminology. They used to be called B-backs. Now they're called T-backs because they're trying to make that position a little more dynamic. Um, and Fofana is someone who's, who's able to fit that bill. I know uh, we'll go over to the defensive side. Uh, you know, compared to the first couple of games of last year, Navy's defense has you know, actually played a little bit better. Uh, I think last year they – we're giving up 359 per game, but this year it's only 335. Um, is it because of Wagner you saw to see the numbers a little skewed, or do you actually see that this uh, uh, Navy defense is improved over last year? Uh, I mean, the numbers are skewed. It's again when you have the the wide range mm-hmm. between giving up so much against Notre Dame, particularly on the ground, which I think was the the big disappointment from from that game. If you have to look at Last year, Notre Dame had less than 100 yards rushing, and this year they had 191. So there was some difference there. And then Wagner, I mean, yeah, no disrespect to Wagner, but but they are what they are. So in terms of it's still early, early in the season to get a statistical feel for it, um, there was some disappointment actually in, in the Notre Dame game um, because there's so much – so many starters are back this year. So – if you look at what Navy was number three in the country against the run last year, they struggled a little bit against the pass, particularly against Memphis, where they gave up three pass plays of 40 or more yards. Um, but the secondary is all a year older. They're all back. 
um, they hired the defensive coordinator from Bowling Green, Eric Lewis, um, to be their safeties coach and pass game coordinator. So they took a lot of steps to, to address what their biggest problem was last year. And I think the hope right now is that that's going to turn this into one of the best defenses from Navy that we've seen in a long time. Um, still, you know, some disappointment didn't really materialize against Notre Dame, but at the same time, that's Notre Dame and they got old man Hartman at quarterback. You know, they have, they're way more, I mean, it's the, just the, the, the talent differential and playing them in the opener is really a different experience than what you usually get from, from Navy when you play them in November. Um, and then against Wagner, everything was very vanilla. They played everything very, uh, they, again, they didn't want to show anything. So mm -hmm. there's a, there's a, the hope is that with all the, the returning experience, plus the, the, you know, the changes that they've made in the secondary, that they've really addressed what issues they had last year and can be a good defense this year, but we still have to see see that materialize. And I was going to ask you about that secondary. It, do you think the the most important player uh, would be the safety? Uh, I may mispronounce his name, but Rayon Lane the third. It, it, is he the key to the Navy secondary? He really is. He's he's really he he's made a lot of strides, um, not just in in pass protection protection but but also they, they've talked about maybe moving him up to the line of scrimmage sometime they've really um tried to find ways to, to get him as involved and possible but he's not alone you know there there's mm -hmm. a lot of there's a lot of talent back there um the the other safety position and bd williams he's moved over from corner mostly a because he's good but B, because they're so comfortable at corner that they felt like they could. They in getting the best four guys on the field. Um, they were comfortable enough moving him because they thought um, cornerbacks were, were solid enough. So I think there's there's some um, you know there's some some optimism around the the defensive backs. Um, it was a really tough challenge against Notre Dame. You know, you know their wide receivers are good, but they were really inexperienced. But Sam Hartman isn't. So he's been mm -hmm. able to hit, you know, hit guys uh, just just with pinpoint accuracy. I mean, he's what 24, 25. He's an old man. So so he's he's basically, you know, he, he's older than some NFL rookies. So, um, you know, it's it's a little bit, you know, it, with with Wagner, it's you know, again, they really backed off. You know, just tried to keep everything in front of them and and mm -hmm. and make the tackle. So. Yeah, I'm kind of a broken record here, but this is the real test for for how the season is going to go. You know, if you're looking at the class of the ACC and especially offensively, and what you're going going to be seeing the rest of the season going forward, this week this is the real test. This is when we find yeah. out uh, about about what Navy's going to be all about. And I know there's uh, a lot of talk, you know, with uh, SMU going to. Uh, the ACC, uh, you know, you hear national reports that uh, Army being uh, football only inclusion. How does that sit with Navy fans? Uh, you know, do they like the idea of having Navy come in? Because the question is, if you have, I'm, I'm sorry, Army come in. If you have Army come in, what do you do with the Army Navy game? I know I, we've talked about this before. When I was at, you know, anytime I'm at the AAC Media Day, I always ask the Navy players, you know. Do you want Army to come in? You know, more often than not, they they wouldn't mind, but they would move the Army Navy game to the first game of the year instead of the last game of the year, and that's controversial because it seems like a lot of the older fans, the traditionalists, they want to be the last game of the year. But when I talk to the younger crowd, it seems like they want to be the first game of the year. You know, how how do you view that? I don't know what what fans think. You, you'll get a wide range. Um, yeah, but but for the way I look at it. The, the game cannot be the first game of the year. Um, and that's, that's not just from, from a fan's perspective, the people who, who are responsible for the money mm -hmm. say that it can't be the first game of the year. Um, when conference championship games came about and they moved army Navy to the week after that, and it's the only FBS game on TV that week, you know, that it enables CBS to pay the kind of money for having that one and only game yeah. to make such a huge financial difference for for both schools 
if you look at Navy, Navy's got 37 varsity sports now. Um, you know, they added a triathlon team. They added a rugby team. You know, they're, they're adding s- sports. That's a lot of mouths to feed. You know, you need money. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah. so the financial benefit of that is, is too, you know, too big to, to, to change anything. So what I think what's being discussed right now is that if Army does come in, um, Army Navy would stay the same, but it would just be played as a non-conference game. So they might be in the same conference, but they'll never play in conference competition. They'll just stay, keep it on the last game of the year. You still run the risk of the miracle season if Army and Navy are playing for the conference championship and having the yeah. game two, two, two weeks in a row. But, I mean, it may happen one in a thousand times. Every other time, every other season, it'll still play out just fine. The way, the way I look at Army coming in, um, I don't really want it. Uh, from a Navy perspective, just because I think being in the American Athletic Conference has been kind of a differentiator between Army and Navy. Um, it's Navy has been, you know, if you look since 2015, Navy's been in that conversation for for uh, a New Year's Six bid a couple times. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they've been a, a lot more in the national spotlight than, and Army just has has had good teams, but as an independent, they just can't be part of that conversation. And you look at the games they they, they play, you know, at the end of October into November when everyone else is playing these crucial conference races, you know, big games getting national attention, they're playing Bucknell, you know, just because yeah. it's hard, it's hard to fill an independent schedule. I'm it sure is. they like to play someone else, but it's just very difficult for them to do that. Um, so I think in, in that sense, it's, the conference membership has kind of set Navy apart, which I think is good for the school. And personally, I don't like it when Army and Navy get lumped together. They are different mm-hmm. schools. So I like having separate identities. But the bottom line really is that Navy's future is really tied to the American Athletic Conference. That's that's just the, the way of, of college athletics now. And what's good for the American is in the long term is good for Navy. So if the American says Army is the best brand out there to bring in, and they are, if, if we're being realistic, you know, you're not going to find a better brand name from Conference USA or the Sun Belt or whoever. Yeah. Um, if, if the conference feels that bringing in Army makes them more valuable, then, then yeah, bring, bring them in and, and have, you know, raise, rising tide raises all boats. Yep. Before we let you go, just tell folks uh, where they can find you on your social media. Uh, I'm at Navy Bird Dog and at The Mid Report on Twitter. And uh, you can find me at uh, TheMidReport.com. I mean, I appreciate your time. Oh, great having me. Thank you. Looking to get away from it all? Hey, it's John here with Tropical Getaways Travel. And when I'm not following the Tigers, I help families and groups have their next amazing vacation. Maybe you're looking for a cruise, or maybe it's an all-inclusive resort that you've been dreaming of. Either way, I can help you plan a vacation that fits your budget and your lifestyle. When you're ready to start planning that vacation, give me a call at 901-667-8747. That's 901-667-8747. Or you can visit my website at tropicalgetaways.net. Let's start planning your next amazing vacation. All right, that was uh, Mike James from uh, the uh, the Mid Report. Uh, appreciate him coming on. Uh, looking ahead to the Navy game, um, you know, ESPN's matchup predictor uh, has has it at uh, a ninety point three percent chance that uh, Memphis is going to uh, win this game. Uh, team rankings has it as a eighty five percent chance. You know, I, I really don't see. A scenario other than you know like major injuries that Memphis loses this game. Um, I, I know you know their defense is a little step up from uh, Arkansas State. You know some things that I, I want to see. Obviously, you know the offensive line play. <clears throat> I harped on it last year. I'm going to harp. Going to continue to harp on it until you see it, you know consistent play out of that group. So you know I want to see uh, you know Memphis get uh, a push off that line. Uh, definitely open up some uh, some holes for the running backs. Uh, more efficient play out of uh, I shouldn't say more efficient play. Just just you know maybe more deep threats. You know m- more deep tries from Seth Hennigan. 
uh, just open up the playbook just a little bit. Um, I, I know you. Uh, this is going to be the first conference game, um, so it's going to be exciting. Thursday night um, action at uh, 6.30 Central, 7.30 Eastern on ESPN. As far as the uh, score prediction, I, I do think Memphis runs away with this one. I can easily – I'm going to say Memphis wins 45-17. Um, so, yeah, I think it, it may be close, you know, or, you know, maybe for like uh, the first half, but, you know, third quarter, which is going to sound weird because you know, lately, you know, Memphis has not really pulled away in the second half. You know, their damage have been in the first half. But I, I do think uh, this is a, a game where you can wear down a Navy a little bit because on paper, Memphis has the better team. Uh, but I want to see want to see them, uh, you know, wear it down. Uh, you know, it might be close at half, but in the end, Memphis pulls away 45-17. So I uh, appreciate everybody listening. If you're, uh, you know, listening on uh, the Apple Podcast or Spotify, wherever you're listening from, or if you're watching on Twitter, definitely appreciate your time. You can subscribe to us uh, and you'll get notified anytime we uh, upload new content. Visit TigerSportsReport.com. Right now we have uh, the... Memphis remaining games in win odds. There's uh, been a big shift on a couple of those games, specifically Missouri. Um, some sites, uh, you know, had Memphis losing that game, but it has now been flipped. Um, you know, before Memphis was only a 36% chance to win that game, but now uh, team rankings has it as a 59% chance. Um, and when we go through all, all the games, so, I mean, if you're, if you look at that, Memphis as is favored now favored or at least tied 50 50 because that SMU game it's a you know 50 50 chance but team ranking says that it's a 57 percent chance so depending on what you're looking at Memphis um, is favored in every single game now on the rest of their schedule so you know they could be 12 and 0 or if you look at the ESPN uh, analytics, they could be 11, one or 10 and two. So yeah, you can check out that article. We also have the pro football uh, focus, uh, you know, stats comparing starters with Navy and Memphis, or you can go back and take a look at the uh, grades from the Arkansas state game um, or the first game of the season when they played at Bethune Cookman. Uh, that's all for tonight. Appreciate everyone listening and or watching, and we'll see you next week. Go Tigers go.